New Year's Day passed and classes began anew. No one sat in the desk behind Kotsky. He couldn't even clench his still relatively useless fist with the anger that boiled up, knowing how much school Deku was missing just laying in a shitty bed. How the fuck was Deku meaning to surpass him as the number one hero when he was flat out in a hospital? That wasn't a fair way to win their lifelong competition. And it wasn't fair to keep Kotsky on edge every single day, wondering how Deku's healing progressed. Of fucking course, he heard about Deku all the goddamn time from his classmates. Every day, someone who had visited him within the UA compound hospital reported on his current state. Kotsky wondered how the fuck Deku could stand all of the visitors. From what he could tell, people hung out with him at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Literally, he was never alone. At least he was surrounded with his stupid friends and was probably smiling his dumb, distracting smile every day. Still, he needed to come back. Not for Kotsky, obviously. Because what use was Deku to himself or anyone else stuck over there? He needed to come back. Not that it meant anything to Kotsky. The further they were from each other, the better. He had made that decision when Deku would have been too stubborn and stupid. It had been the right thing. It had been what a good hero would have done. Protected the people they cared about from danger. So why did it hurt so fucking bad? January passed and Valentine's Day came. Kotsky opened his locker and chocolates dumped out onto his feet. Gritting his teeth, he stared down at the mess of gross girl emotions mauling him first thing in the morning. Deku would never do something like this if they were going out. He knew he'd get drop kicked over the fucking moon. Kotsky's hands froze in the process of scooping up the offensive gifts, his eyes wide as he stared at his feet. Why the fuck was that nerd popping up at a time like this? Had he gotten a concussion in yesterday's scrimmage? Shitting hell. With a rabid animal scream, Kotsky shoved the valentines into the nearest garbage can, whirling around at the gawking populace. What? Kotsky said, a sneering smile twisting up his features, a vein above his eyebrow pulsing. The hell you bastards looking at? You want chocolate? Dig in the fucking garbage. Bro. Ashido said from behind, still bundled up in her plaid neon green puffer jacket. What's going on with you? Chill out. She put a hand on Kotsky's shoulder and gave a hard push, directing him back to their lockers. A growl rumbled deep in his chest, but he allowed her to lead him away. I hate Valentine's Day. He said, low and menacing, snapping a look over his shoulders as if some chick with a confession letter would peek around the corner at any minute. I don't even know how you have the fan club you do. Ashido said, pulling off her penguin face deer muffs and fluffing up her new pink faux hawk. You're probably the least attractive dude I've ever met, personality-wise. And that's saying something. Remember when I dated Monoma for that one week in second year? What the fuck was I thinking? Kotsky sighed as he put on his indoor shoes and slammed the locker door. You said he had a dick like a wand because it had to be magic. I remember this because you fucking scarred me for life and I haven't been able to look him in the face since. Oh yeah. Ashido said, walking beside Kotsky as she frowned into the distance. I forgot about that. Maybe I need to give him a call. Anyway, I won't tell Midori about your admirers, promise. Although, I can't imagine he's the type to get jealous. Kotsky stopped dead in the hallway, his head turning mechanically, his face frozen. What? I said... We're not fucking going out! A hysterical laugh leapt from Kotsky's mouth as he stared incredulously at Ashido. Him? That nerd? And me? Have you met me? I'm pretty sure we just established that I've met you and you're basically officially the worst. Ashido said, eyeing him dubiously. Dude, you're gonna hyperventilate if you breathe that fast. Why so pissed? Kotsky sucked in a breath through his clenched teeth, a hiss in and out as he listened to Ashido ramble with increasing wrath. We all kind of assumed you two were a thing after the winter training. Like, if you guys are just good friends now, my bad. 
Todoroki was actually in your corner. I should have known from that alone, since he's so close with Deku anyway. We thought you just hadn't mentioned you two because you were embarrassed. Wide-eyed and ready to screech loud enough to shatter windows, Kotsky fist swooped his face and to drill a stare into her. Are you fucking nuts? Who? When? How the fuck does everyone think we're- I mean- Ashido said, aiming a narrow look of black and gold at him, unblinkingly meeting his gaze. You've been obsessed with him for like three years, so we just assumed? Finally? Finally. With wild eyes, Kotsky barked another frantic laugh. Obsessed. Dumbass. How could I be? You know what? Ashido said, grinning cockily in the face of Kotsky's increasingly crazed public display. You look like you're having boy trouble. I get it, man. It happens to the best of us. I've got something for you. What the fuck is boy trouble? Kotsky said, baring his teeth in a sneer as he shoved his hands in his pockets. Who the fuck has it? Bitch, say it again and die. Ashido dug for something in her book bag and eventually, with a victorious swoop, unearthed a slightly crumpled Hot Peak magazine. Smiling brightly, she mashed it against Kotsky's chest, her hand pressing firm until Kotsky slapped a hand up and took it. What the fuck is- Kotsky's eyes bugged out. He slapped the magazine cover onto his chest again, his face going up in flame as he glowered and snapped. You think I need this bullshit? I'll shove this trash so far up your ass that- Hey! Hey! Ashido was already walking away holding a hand up in a wave. You can be late for class, Ashido called out. But I won't be just because of your boy feelings crisis in the hallway. Bye, bro. Fuck. Shooting a glare over his shoulder at the emptying hallway, Kotsky looked down at the magazine again, keeping it close to his body. Headlines sprayed in all directions, in white and black with some creepy-looking girl in a weird, unnatural pose on the cover. Inevitably, his eyes lingered over one single headline. Ten ways to know you're in love. Fuck. Grinding his teeth down, Kotsky rolled the stupid fucking magazine and shoved it into his back pocket, no doubt sticking out obscenely in pink. Stalking towards class, Kotsky could only grit out under his breath. A fucking murder. Ah, uh, Bakugo. As I was said as Kotsky entered the room. Good to see you've managed to grace us with your disruptive presence. Who's disruptive? Kotsky said darkly, slouching into his seat. He glowered at the tight black gloves that still kept him from fisting his hands. You'll be in the hospital getting your gloves off today, won't you? As Awa said, his eyes sharp enough on Kotsky to have him reply with a glare. So... So, that means you're tasked with the luck of delivering Midoriya's weekend assignments after school. That hysterical bubble started to tickle at Kotsky's throat again, threatening to pop. He snorted. Like hell I am. Like hell you are, or you can clean up the classroom every day after school for a week. Good, Kotsky said with a grin as he slumped back against his chair and folded his arms. Sounds great, I'll do that. Or I'll just expel you for not minding your teacher. As Zawa said with a long sigh as he shuffled some papers at his podium. Too bad, talent wasted. Probably for the best, though. You'd be an awful hero. All right, all right, shit. Magazine burning a hole in his back pocket. Kotsky could tell this Valentine's Day would prove to be hell on earth. Hours later, standing in front of a closed hospital room door folder of assignments under his arm. Kotsky knew that this was, in fact, his own personal hell, and it had been his own doing which had led him to this. Some unfamiliar, twisting, tight coil in his stomach kept him jittering and fidgety under the skin. He didn't understand this fucking emotion or what the hell his body was doing, but it pissed him off. Since when did the idea of talking to Deku elicit nerves over rage? That little fucker. It had only been a month and a half since they'd seen each other. Big fucking deal. Against every instinct screaming in his body, Kotsky rapped loudly and too long on the door. Come in already. 
came Deku's voice, already laughing, obviously assuming it was someone else. Face screwed in distaste, Kotsky rushed through the doorway, ready to get this over with. It's just me, nerd. He said, rushing in without looking at Deku's face and dropping the folder on his lap. School shit. Already turning on his heel to evacuate the room, Kotsky winced at the sound of Deku's voice. How are your hands? What? They're fine. Kotsky said, making it to the door and gripping the knob. When did you get your gloves off? Today. He said without turning, seeing Deku's face would make him angry. Not angry at Deku, though. Bye. He said, yanking the door open with too much force. You don't have to feel bad, you know. I don't feel bad about shit. Kotsky whipped around, eyes blazing, tension and temper boiling over, scalding. The fuck do I have to feel bad about, stupid fucking Deku? You made your own damn choices that put you here, and now you've royally fucked yourself over, missing out on class and battle and... I know. Kotsky paused, his hands shaking, breath shuddering in shallow, uneven huffs as he blinked past the red haze and really looked. Deku's eyebrow stitches had come out. A thick, fresh pink scar cut down the outer corner of his left eyebrow. He looked older for it, despite his forever youthful disposition. Over the last three years, his cheeks had gotten a little sharper, a little more hollowed out, his jaw tougher, his eyebrows more serious. Even his eyes had lost a little of their gleam, or maybe that was more recent. But he was still Deku, the one who draped himself over Kotsky's back in a hug and kissed his cheek. The one who always met his gaze evenly, even brazingly, daring Kotsky to try and bring him down. Still the Deku he'd kissed and imagined he'd kiss forever without taking another breath. And he was still the Deku who could die any fucking day of the year. That's what heroes did too. They lived. They died. The fuck do you know? Koski said, his face heating as he realized he'd been caught staring. I know that I've had a good six weeks in here to sit and think. Deku said, inclining his chin in that stubborn way he had of daring Kotsky to punch him. His eyes were hard, unwavering, and honest. I know I've made mistakes in putting myself in that level of danger. When the first thing I should have done was run to our friends, not automatically protect them when they're perfectly capable heroes. Self-sacrifice shouldn't be the first and only option I give myself. No shit. Koski said, somehow unable to tear his gaze from the scar that taunted him from Deku's face. Jesus, you think that's some clever crap? That's normal as fuck logic right there. Don't act like you've never run into a fight, guns blazing. Kachan snorted a laugh, his grin slicing sharp across his face as he crossed his arms and cocked a hip at the foot of Deku's bed. That's cause my guns fucking win and they don't kill me in the process, unlike yours. Deku's gaze flickered to scarred hand. He opened his palm, looking down at it without any apparent anger contorting his face, not like Kachan's features. Maybe, Deku said lowly. He looked up, locking eyes with Kotsky in a way that imprisoned him with their honesty. I'm sorry that I hurt you and scared you. A chill shrieked down Kotsky's spine, his skin prickling with the sheer shock of it as he gawked. This guy, this fucking guy, was apologizing to him, after Kotsky was the one who'd failed like a complete loser to save him. None of this would have happened if Kotsky had been stronger, had sacrificed more. Shit. Kotsky was standing in front of a grade A idiot, and all he wanted to do was bury his face in Deku's lap and apologize until he could find a way to forgive himself. Fuck. Your apology can fuck off and die. Kotsky said, his words shaking with tremulous manic laughter barely held at bay. Like hell I'd accept something like that. What's wrong with you? Kotsky backed up towards the door, one hand grappling behind him for the knob. He burst into a short, high laugh as he boggled at Deku's wilting expression. Like hell. 
The door slamming behind Kotsky's retreating back felt like a bullet to his chest, and he'd been the one to pull the trigger. Gritting his teeth against the pain, he stalked away. March stormed in with thunder and lightning and washed Deku back into class with it. A cheer rose over the distant roll of thunder as Deku lopped back in on crutches, his smile wide. His expression dazzled with the welcome back banner hung across the chalkboard and the balloons tied to his seat. Kotsky wanted to barf. The nausea only grew when class settled in and Deku took the desk behind him without a glance his way. Throughout the entire day, Deku never cast him a single second of attention. He was all smiles and jokes, intently listening to gossip he'd yet to catch up on, getting enveloped in sudden group huddles from the girls mooning over his new scar, even greeting people Kotsky didn't recognize in the hallway who congratulated him on his return. The two of them didn't speak a word to each other. A month of hell dragged on in much the same way. Deku's crutches disappeared. His scar became paler and starker. And though his gait was a little lopsided and crooked, he was up and running almost as if nothing had happened. On the few occasions their gazes crossed by chance, Kotsky had to question himself as to what had happened all those months ago. Deku's expression was so fucking blank, so infuriatingly polite and impersonal that Kotsky wanted to launch the goddamn desks across the room to clear his path, grab Deku by the hair, and force him to say Kotsky's name again. Kotsky had done this. He'd made his choice for the both of them. Deku would be safer this way, apart from him. He wanted to scream. The internal screaming still rang in his head when Kotsky opened his eyes in April and remembered it was his stupid fucking birthday. People would probably surround him with gross touching and affection and useless gifts he never wanted or needed. The only attention he ever wanted was hero-related attention. Birthday attention was for snot-nosed five-year-olds. A groan of dread rumbling in his chest, Kotsky stepped out of bed, slipped on a magazine that slid from beneath his foot and toppled to the floor. Motherfucking mornings could suck my co- Absently rubbing his ass as he stood, Kotsky took the hot pink magazine up with him. Frowning, he sat bedside and stared at the crinkled cover. Ten ways to know you're in love. Fuck my life. Kotsky said under his breath as he frantically flipped through the pages, some of them ripping with the force of his urgency. His heart tripped up as he swallowed and scanned the pages full of bold numbering. They're the best part of your day. Kotsky chewed the inside of his cheek as he thought of Deku's smile every morning, of growling a greeting as he would take a seat beside him, beating the shit out of each other in battle until neither of them could move or finish the fight arguing over the dinner table until the kicking fight beneath it ended up overturning the entire thing. They're the first person you think about. Kotsky pinched the bridge of his nose and scrunched his eyes shut. A headache was starting to pulse behind his eyes. You prioritize them over your own needs. Kotsky had never known what it was to not get what he wanted. He'd never known what it was like to think of someone else before himself. And then he'd run head-fucking first into an avalanche for another person. Fuck. You'd do anything for them. Kotsky couldn't breathe. You're never afraid to express your feelings for them in public. Kotsky's heart lurched. All of the affection Degu had given so freely and all of those motions Kotsky had never returned. Afraid. Was that what this fucking was? He didn't have a clue anymore. What he did know was that he missed the way Deku looked up at him, touched him, soothed him. You love the imperfections. Stubbornness, self-sacrifice, unabashed wonder for the world and total gullibility. Quick to assume he was right and even quicker to argue his point when it mattered to him. Determined to a fault. Kotsky knew this was what made Deku a hero. How could he ask him to change? You imagine your future with them in it. Kotsky frowned, his brow furrowed as he hunched over the magazine like it was something sapping the life out of him. A future without Deku around. Did that? How did that work? There'd never been a fucking week without Deku in his life, from birth onward. Until recently. Until Kotsky had made the choice. He had to protect Deku. There wasn't another choice, was there? 
you're a better person around them. Kotsky snorted a laugh. Was he better or worse around him? Could he be both? Deku's large hand resting upon his shoulder, his back, his chest, constantly keeping him at bay, calming him, banking the fires that threatened to detonate day in and out. Your feelings are unconditional. Panic built up in Kotsky's throat like a noose. He sucked in a breath but forgot to release. He read the words, his mouth going dry. One more number left. Your love is your best friend. His vision blurred. His heart threw itself against his ribcage, howling for freedom, ripping at his gut, firing up his burning veins. Kotsky's face lit a flame. Shit. He dropped the magazine to the floor. Fuck. He stood. No. His hands buried in his hair, he stared at the floor. The magazine laid open, accusatory and hot pink. No. Kotsky said, walking away, rubbing his hands roughly over his face, his hip knocking into the corner of his desk, the sharp pain going unnoticed. Fuck. A tentative knock sounded at the door. I will fucking rip your hand off and fist your own asshole with it if you don't back the fuck off into the goddamn landfill where you belong. There was a long pause. Kotsky ripped off his t-shirt and paced the floor, distracted from his intent to get his shower materials and go wash off the stench of desperation and... And what? Lovesickness. Shit, he was seriously gonna puke. Rajan. Deku's voice was soft and tentative from behind the door, but still he whirled around in shock, backed up into his chair, launched literal head over heels and landed on his head and shoulders with a string of curse words that would horrify even his mother. Jumping up, he lunged at the door and whipped it open. Deku stood there, peering up at him with guarded eyes like deep secret forests, his brows as straight and serious as his mouth. He still wore a shirt rumpled from sleep and plaid boxers, like he'd come over without a plan. His cheeks were pink and his hair rumpled in a way that immediately shot to Kotsky's core with the memory of fucking Deku straight into the mattress. Kachan, could I? Kotsky hauled Deku in by the collar. The door slammed and Deku's back against it, fingertips digging into his hips with the desire and regret of months. Kotsky pressed their bodies flush together his forehead propping against Deku's, their erratic breath mingling between two close lips. Let me have you. Kosky ground out, his voice dragged through a desert. Deku. Deku's eyes flashed, his hand snapped up, held Kotsky firmly by the throat. Fuck you, asshole. When their mouths collided and attacked, Kotsky already knew he'd be the one to lose this round.